the majority of my life. Um, until recently, where I think that I finally found grounds in the city by a formal union. Um, <laughs> that's Jack Bissar, right? They're laughing at my speech, but yeah. Um, um, so, right now, with this exhibition, we're trying to, at least for my, with, with the prefix that I just mentioned, I'm trying to draw a connection between my cultural identity and my personal history with the city of Kathmandu um, and the exhibition today. Um, I'm sure a lot of, you know, like a mini small anecdote or stories like mine can be witnessed um, more often than not where individuals and communities and groups from corners from the country or within the country or outside somehow assembled in Kathmandu over a course of time and they have their own, you know, unique relationship established with the city. Um, and I'm trying to say that that's exactly what this exhibition is about today. It's about the celebration of this rich mix that Kathmandu has. You know, because we have um, a lot of multiple traditions, exchange of ideas and um, customs and uh, values and so forth. And that's exactly what this exhibition is about today. We're trying to um, put across uh, a show that we all can experience together and celebrate together. So, yeah, thank you to the team, to Susan and I, to um, Film Foundry for collaborating with me and providing me this space to be a part of this journey and for as much as I enjoy being a part of the process, I hope you all do too. Um, so with that said, I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Sangeeta Thapa on stage to give a, to say a few words. Honorable Chief Guests, Mayor Chiri Babu Maharjan and Professor Dr. Niels Kutcho, dear friends, artists, musicians, and members of the media. On behalf of the gallery and the artists, I would like to welcome everyone to this exhibition that seeks to celebrate the essence of Kathmandu Valley. It is a collective movement that aims to capture It, the valley is becoming increasingly built up, haphazard buildings are, are, are cropping up and losing touch with the roots of its culture. The aim of this ex exhibition is to redirect and move back to values that celebrate liveliness, multiculturalism and artistic liberation. Susan Dungold shares that the artists wants, want to evoke a feeling of coming back home. Lastly. Tale of a City hopes to become more than a collection of works that are displayed at the gallery for a given time, and an overall reorientation of seemingly modern values to ideas that are indigenous, historical, and our own. The exhibition today, Tale of a City, is an exhibition featuring eight artists. Abhishek Shah, who just performed, Anil Ranjit, Jagdis Upadhyay, Rupesh Man Singh from Film Foundry, whose exhibition I held two years ago, Sharmila Shrestha, married to Susan Dungol, Susan Dungol himself, and the Patan based musical ensemble, Jata Dhari Bhajan Kala. Thank you for performing here today. The artists are working with multiple mediums. They have come together to explore the ideas they make Kathmandu Valley a unique amalgamation of culture, tradition, and heritage that it was in the past and that it is today. Like Nea said before, Kathmandu Valley is a place with a unique history. From the stories of Manjushri to sacred Kya dance, the valley holds more dimensions than just socio-economic or political ones. This is the main reason the exhibition is titled Tale of a City, highlighting how it has its own intangible yet powerful story to tell. The exhibition features multiple mediums, pen and ink drawings, photographs, video, and rice straw art. Moreover, this exhibition is not a static medium. It will feature dynamic forms like performance art, music, and the famous Samay Bhaji of the Newa people. As an exhibition reflecting on the nostalgia of Kathmandu Valley, it is inherently tied to Newar culture and heritage. The word Newar 
essentially means inhabitants of the valley. This exhibition is more than just a word that describes a certain community. According to the artist Sujun Dangol, the word Newa itself is a way of life. And their works are a celebration of this way, this way of life. I'm very honored to have with us today as our chief guests, Chiri Babu Maharjan, mayor of Lalitpur. I wish you were the mayor of Kathmandu. Oh. But there you are in Lalitpur. We are so honored that you are here today. May I invite you, Mayor Saab, to say a few words. We are now... Um, so, Amro, yeah, Mayor Saab, this speech is not a good Tika Thank you. Namaste. Jojo Mapa and good evening. Uh, my name is Siri Babu Bahadza. I'm the mayor of Malipur Metropolitan City. I represent Malipur, not Kathmandu. <laughs> okay, thank you, all of you. And it's my great pleasure to uh, come here as the chief guest. But I'm very sorry, I didn't do any homework for this deliberation. I got an invitation, so I hurriedly came here, but uh, all of you looks very big here. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I just like to congratulate all the uh, performers, all the persons who organized this rather great event. And of course, these performers are from my place. So I'm quite uh, happy to have them here in Kathmandu, not in Patan. <laughs> okay, uh, I being the mayor of Malipur Metropolitan City, it's my, uh, we completed four years and it's a fifth year running and uh, our tenure is going to finish very soon. Uh, very few months left. However, we have done uh, quite a lot. This I claim. Because in my manifesto, whatever I have said, we have achieved almost 80% of what I said. So I'm quite happy. On top of that, we got almost eight, nine months, which I think one year. So it's a 20 months, 20% 20 left over, which will be achieved again. So I will be 100% done. Okay, so uh, I don't want to tell you other things, but uh, we are trying to make our city smart city. It has so many components which is to be incorporated one at a time, so which we are doing. But I just like to focus on to the tangible and intangible heritage of Patan. The city is UNESCO designated World Heritage Site. 
and uh, the earthquake, uh, 2015 earthquake, did bring down a lot of temples onto the ground. So now all of those have been reinstated. But while we say tangible heritage, these are the things. But of course, these performances are intangible heritage. All the intangible heritage are associated with the tangible heritage. If there is no temple, no this sort of intangible heritage will be not available, or it's meaningless. Therefore, whatever we are doing, it's a tangible and intangible heritage. For instance, uh, what we say during the Dasan, it's Navami, we had a very, very interesting Kharga Jatra, which we call in Nevani Payo Jatra. That was done almost 20 years ago. But once we came, then we again restarted this. It was really very, very fantastic. It's very nice and very popular after the Red Machina Nakshya Year Festival. So this year we just performed on Navami during the same time, which is nicely went. So a lot of people congratulated me. So this is what we are doing and we are, of course, uh, in each and every toll, what we say, community, each and every community does have this type of band that is we call dhime. It's a drum, then we call it the busha, which is called the simbar. Simbar. The combination of these two is dhime baza. So this thing has been reinstated in our city very, very nicely. So I once again very proud of the performance. So okay, now today the the the, the program is season dangles. Uh, what the name of the uh, uh, tale of the city? Uh, I I will I visited few pictures, but I didn't understand what that was. <laughs> It's very difficult to understand. So I quite oftenly I asked Susan to explain some of those. He did nicely. He did. He did his explanation nicely. So I now got little information. Anyways, thank you, Susan, for your excellent job, exemplary job. This could be one of the very uh, important jobs the youngsters are doing in Nepal. Now these days again he represents Patan. Now he's, he has shifted from Kathmandu to Lalitpur. <laughs> so that, that, so that will definitely satisfy you. <laughs> okay, having said this, uh, I, I, I like to congratulate all of you. And uh, having said this, I just want to complete my deliberation. Thank you very much. provided an important documentation of our culture. From Pujari Mat in Bhaktapur to Gorkha, Nuwako, Sal and Kinga, Dr. Goodshaw has been documenting the decline of the valley's pristine landscape and now into a concrete jungle. I would now like to invite Professor Dr. Niels Goodshaw to stay.
đấy Thanks for the feta. The last time I got a feta was in July 1989. Oh. When uh, we celebrated the taking of the possession of our house near Bagdadur in the fields. Because the house was haunted by boot and tread. So we pacified all the spirits of the place. And then from you might not know. From the ridge of the house, water has to come down on my head and my wife's head. And then we got the thing. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyhow. How are you? It's not possible too many people there in the background. Can you not come in front? There is a lot of space here. No? Yeah. yeah. Come. Come, come. Come on. Oh, the more people in the background. Can you please come? Come here. Come here. Oh. Come here. So I have to tell you that uh, 10 days ago, Sarita asked me to come to this celebration of art and talk for five minutes. So I said, Sangeeta, I can't do that. I can't do justice to what these people did in five minutes. So he agreed it may be a little bit longer. Uh, and I prepared my talk in the long uh, manner, which I will not read out, but I will try to uh, be a little bit shorter. But even more important, I felt talking about art also means I have to talk to these about these two people, Sun John and Jack Dish. And I see, said, please, can you visit me at home and show me a little bit of work before I come here? And let's talk about it. So we talked, in fact, Little about their work, but about their life. Who is Sundar? Who is Jagadish? Now, uh, um, to start with Sujan, yeah. uh, his father, his grandfather, ran away to Varanasi, which was <laughs> called the secret capital of Nepal. <laughs> and uh, only, only in 1962, his father returned, uh, and I might have met him in Varanasi, because in June uh, 1962, I crossed through Varanasi and uh, on my way to Nepal. Now, uh, Sudan, uh, Sudan's father moved to Mahabauda Kathmandu, later to Navaha in Patan, only, and I think you were born in Patan or in Maru? In Mahabauda. In Mahabauda. So, so the little boy came to uh, uh, Navaha. And uh, he told me he used to see his neighborhood, his baranda. And I was surprised that he talked about his baranda because where is the kaushi? The, ka the kaushi was already lost and this little boy was not allowed to enter the roof, this wood, which was now Jasta. Uh, okay, he grew up and there and I think his work reflects his memories. And maybe not only his memories, but also his yearning for something, yearning for meaning, and yearning for rootedness. Uh, Jagadi's grandfather ran away much earlier, 
already in 1935 he ran away. Actually, the poor boy was married at the age of 16, and obviously he couldn't bear it and ran away. And uh, only, uh, I think, 15 or 20 years later, he returned to Kathmandu, searched for the wife to whom he was married at some time, and Jagadis uh, was born. So uh, Jagadis' grandfather came from the foot, from the hill of Santaneshwar, moved to Varanasi, from Varanasi to Maru, where he opened a uh, uh, shop for Dalbat. And uh, Jagadish ran, also ran away. Uh, when he uh, grew up, he went to Paris to study aviation. And after a long time of seven years, he decided that's good for nothing. I will leave aviation, go uh, to the US. He spent 13 years in Seattle and learned photography. And only quite recently, uh, 50, almost 20 years ago, he returned to Kathmandu to run, as he told me, the only remaining dark room in the valley. I don't know if everybody agrees that it's really the only remaining dark room. Anyhow, so these are the two artists. And I have to add that my grandfather also went here. Uh, in the wake of the German-French war in, uh, in 1870, he ran away from, from conscription and ended up in southern Spain to enter uh, uh, the trading of wine. And in a way, Jack Dish I also ran away uh, at the age of 20. Uh, I left my uh, hometown by train, uh, and after a few months, I ended up in Varanasi and later here in this valley. And exactly at the time of the uh, Bhatsendra Nath Jatra. And who knows, maybe that was one of the reasons I was so fascinated by the urban rituals of this valley that I came again and again. And that uh, kept me working here for the past uh, 50 years. And I have to add that at the age of 18, I was producing huge, not drawings, but paintings emulating my person and hero, Jackson Pollock. But I didn't become a painter, uh, and I not even became an architect like my father, but I became an architectural historian and a self-proclaimed architectural anthropologist. And in such, and that uh, capacity, I want to say a few words about the work of these two artists. So that was already more than five minutes. <laughs> <coughs> uh, I already mentioned that I have the feeling uh, that brings his dreams on paper. This is, in fact, an enlargement of Navaha. But this is not uh, identified with to 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 topography, but it is any, any cluster of Neva houses uh, and on, on top. 
you see the temporal overlay over this environment, and maybe this is what Sudran felt is lost. Even more so because three years ago we uh, moved to Dapakel, that means he is still in the district of Bad, but he is not in Bad. He lost, he lost his special urban uh, uh, feeling of being in Bad. And the question is beyond realizing his dreams in the, in the ridiculous drawings. The question is why does he uh, depict Weimar on the black horse? And I was, I felt reminded of, in fact, Kalki on a white horse. Kalki entering our world in order to restore Dharma. And if you look uh, more near to the picture, you see a jumble of old houses and the new, in Kathmandu, six, seven story boxes, I call them boxes, coming up. And obviously, Sutra is disturbed and presents Kalki on, on top of it. Uh, more so, that Valaha uh, uh, supported by uh, a fish, a snake, a tortoise, uh, supporting the circular world. And the circle, in fact, so always stands for heaven. So is Varaha uh, supporting uh, Swarga? Is this what Sudan is has <coughs> lost or is aiming for? I have to look a little bit in my my directory. Yeah, I wanted to say that Udran reflects the great tradition, be it Varaha, be it Kalki, be it Bayerwa, all this is the great tradition of the subcontinent, which is based on the Puranas. That, let us say the Sanskrit knowledge of this world. Jagdi's work, in contrast, is of a very different kind. Jagdi works in the dark room. His work, in the context of his work, I call the, the dark room the uterus. And he works on producing images. And decidedly, he has blurred edges on the photographs, on, and pr he prints it on Nepali paper. And this leads, in a way, the dark, the uterus, to be visible to all of us. It's a photograph. But only now, his work, his, what I call his real work, starts. Because the photograph gets a stroke. Jackie, which finger do you use use for this stroke? Is it the index finger of the right hand or is it the middle finger? 
in the experience. Okay. But why these red strokes of the meridian? And only him visiting me, me talking for an hour, I came to know that these red strokes he borrowed from the 12th stone of behind the temple behind the temple of uh, Sikali or Rutyarayani, whatever you call her, there are 12 stones. And these stones receive marks with vermilion. And these marks on the, on the stone are renewed every year, starting with Gattastatu. So for four days, uh, there are eight youngsters who have been uh, fasting for 14, 14 days who renew these uh, strokes. So why a stroke on a stone? And why Jagdish uh, repeats that action to bring life, because let us say the black and white photograph leaving the dark room is still dead.